Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. This is going to be the final video in the series that we've been working on about how you can make skateboards and all the tools you need to make skateboards very inexpensively and with very few tools. So just to get you caught up, the videos we've made so far, the first video we made a set of molds, the second video we made a set of clamps to compress the molds and compress all of our layers of our, of our deck together. In the last video, I showed you how to do a layup and how to use those clamps and press decks, and we made these. We made two deck blanks. We made one using some clamps and some more high-tech, slightly more expensive, but more precise clamping methods. And we made this one, which we just piled a bunch of heavy stuff up on top of the mold. Both methods worked really well. And the deck blanks that we have to work with are, are really quite nice. So all that's left to do at this point is to take our blanks from a rectangular shape and make them skateboard shaped and drill holes so that we can mount trucks on them. And continuing with the theme of these videos so far, I want to show you a way of doing that that requires very little tools and is very inexpensive. And all of this is in the hopes that you'll take the information in these videos and get out there and make and ride your own boards because it is really fun. So to start off, we have to talk about some tools. We're going to be covering two processes today. We're going to be covering shaping and drilling. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to need for drilling the boards out. It's very straightforward. To drill your truck mounting holes, you're going to need a drill. And as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, this is going to be the most expensive technical piece of equipment that you need in order to do this whole project. However, I do absolutely think it's worth the cost. You don't want to be doing this with a hand drill. <laughs> you could, you really could, if you, if you had one and you were really strapped for cash. But it's going to be really hard to make it accurate, it's going to be really hard to keep your holes straight, and it's just going to be a lot of work. So I would really recommend hunting down a drill. You can buy one, but you can also buy one used, look on Craigslist, look at yard sales, borrow one, see if there's like a tool, tool library, tool sharing program near you. If you really are strapped, you can get creative and get a hold of one, but I mean, it's such a useful tool. I know what it's like to try to make a board on a budget and have to consider every expense, but if you're going to get started in board building, and you want to continue with this hobby, this is probably the best place to put your money at first. So highly recommend getting yourself hold of a drill if you don't already have one. And like I said, you need a 3 16 inch bit. That is the industry standard hole size for hardware for mounting your trucks. And I also highly recommend getting a template. We'll have one linked in the description below, but a template to help you lay out your holes and make sure that everything's aligned along your center line is really helpful and really can't overstate the importance of this. You just print it out on a piece of paper and it gives you an indication of exactly where you need to drill your holes so that they line up with the industry standard mounting pattern for the decks. So drill, bit, and a template. For shaping, you're going to again need some kind of saw. So here we've got our wood saw and our hole saw back again. I've been mentioning this saw kind of throughout because it's six bucks and because it does an okay job at all the things that you need to cut throughout the whole build process. You can rough cut the shape of a board with this saw. It's gonna be slow, it's gonna take a lot of work, but if you're really strapped for cash, you can do it. Before I put this down, the other advantage of a saw of this shape is that since the blade is pretty thin but pretty stiff, you can cut curves. It might be a little easier if you want rounded shapes to your nose and tail, for example, to use a saw with a thinner blade, whereas a saw like this with a broad blade is really only going to be able to cut straight lines. And the kind of saw you have could help inform the decisions you make about the shape of your board, which we'll see as we get into shaping. You're going to need a straight edge and a, well, a pen or a marker or something to mark your lines with so you can lay out your shape on your board. If you're only making one board, you can do your layout right on the board. If you want to make multiple boards or if you want to kind of like freehand curves, it helps to make a template. You can do that by taking a piece of paper, folding it in half, and that fold becomes your center line. You can draw half of your shape and then cut it out, and then when you open it up, it'll be symmetrical, and then I'll make sure that your curves are the same on both sides. But I'm going to do a pretty linear shape, and I'm only going to do one of this shape. So I'm going to do it right on the board. So I'll just be laying it out with a ruler and a pen. That's the fastest, easiest way to do it. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So we've marked out our shape. We've cut it. After that, you're going to have the rails of the board, and they're going to need to get smooth. So you're going to need sandpaper. A variety of grits really helps. And especially if you're doing it by hand, having a nice coarse grit, a 60 or 80 grit to really just reduce the amount of elbow grease you have to put in, 
goes a long way. But you also want something smooth so you can have nice smooth edges. A 220 works really well, or something in the hundreds, single, you know, 150, 160, whatever like that, will help you out. A saw, your marking tools, and some sandpaper is the bare minimum you need to do this. You can shape a board that way. It takes a little bit more elbow grease, but you can get through it. If you want to save yourself some work and you have the tools available, there are some other shaping tools that really help out. Things that can go a long way are things like a block plane, a small block plane to help round over your straight edges. will make really quick work of the roughing out of the edges and the rails. And then abrasive or cutting tools like a microplane works really well especially for doing curves. And rasps or files are really good, again, for doing curves and making sure your shapes get nice and round and smooth. Now, this rasp is probably a little bit too aggressive, but some of the less spiky ones, <laughs> basically, uh, will help do the job. Microplane is a really nice tool for this. I've used this a couple times before. I will probably, today for the demonstration, be using the block plane, the microplane, and the abrasives. So that's everything you're gonna need for shaping. I'm gonna start with the drilling, so I'm gonna drop my center line through the middle of the board. We're gonna drill our holes, and then I'm gonna start to lay out the shape. We'll cut it, round the edges, and then we'll be done. So let's get started. So as we've been going through the build, I have mentioned along the way that you wanna maintain your center line, and we've done that. We took our center line, we marked it in our mold, we took the center line from our mold and marked it on the nose and tail of our deck, and I've extended that out. You can't see it on film probably, but I've got a small little tick in middle here. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm laying out my bolt holes is to drop that center line down across the board. I'm going to do it in pencil because I'm going to want to either erase it or sand it out for my graphics later. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with visuals on this, so I want to leave myself options. Another thing that you can kind of keep in mind is if you're not using a template where you want to trace one side and then trace the other and make it symmetrical along the center line, um, you only need the center line where the bolts are going to be. So I'm gonna, I've got my tick mark here, I've got my tick mark here. I'm gonna give myself a line up the nose of the board to work off of. And then I'm gonna grab the tick mark on the tail, and the tick mark in the center, and do the same thing, giving myself a line in the center of the board. As far as truck placement goes, uh, it's pretty normal to have the bolt holes or the truck start right before the transition of a tail. Like if you were going to make a street deck and you had two kicktails like this, the trucks would be right about there. But moving them forward or back changes the angle of attack of the tail. Since you're not actually changing the angle of the tail, having that extra flat kind of changes how the lever feels underfoot. So play with that. Moving your, your bolt holes around will give you very different experiences. The next thing you want to do is grab your bolt hole template. You want to know ahead of time whether the trucks you want to use have a new school or old school drilling pattern. Old school drilling patterns a little bit longer. Uh, the template that we have linked below has them labeled, so just make sure that you know what bolt hole pattern the trucks you want to use has so that you're drilling for the right set of trucks. You can do that by just taking your template and holding it up against the trucks and seeing which length lines up. You can also usually find the information about that online. So what you do is you take your template and you can tape it down if you're scared of it wobbling around, but I'm just gonna hold it down with my fingers. The transition from my tail is right around there. So I could actually probably come this way a little bit more. Make sure that the center line on the template lines up with your center line on both ends. And then I'm just gonna take a nail and use that to center punch all my holes. And the trucks that I am planning on using for this board are a new school pattern, the shorter one. So I'm gonna mark that. And then we're going to turn around and do the same thing. And you can see there are my center punched marks, all four of them. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the nose. And let's see, the transition for the nose starts about here. I could actually put the truck up a little bit on the nose. And what that does, it would be like having a wedge riser under the truck. It increases the angle of the truck and will probably make it a little bit more turny. Now, I like a wider wheelbase, so let me see where that kind of puts us here. Um, still pretty short, so I think I'm gonna do that. I think I am gonna nudge the trucks up just a little bit into the transition to the nose. And then it's just the same thing. I'm making sure that my center line for my template is lined up with the center line of my board. 
and then I center punch my holes. And if your template's good, and if you've maintained your center line correctly uh, throughout the build, when you go to drill these holes, if you drill them nice and straight and centered, the truck should be perfectly aligned and your board should roll straight. So you can see I've got the center line of the board here, and then I've got my center punched marks for where the holes should go. I've got my 3 16 inch drill bit, and I'm gonna drill down through the deck. I like drilling from the bottom because if you get some tear out on the top, you're gonna cover it with grip tape anyway, so it'll be hidden. But I also like drilling from the top because until you cut a shape out of the board, it's stable. If you were to drill it from the bottom, all of the curves would make the board rock around. Drilling it this way just means the blank's gonna stay still for a little bit longer, which I find useful. When you're drilling, you want as best as possible to keep your drill upright and as best as possible when you do each hole to try to keep the angle the same and that'll just make sure that your bolts don't go all wonky as they're getting guided through the deck and will hopefully line up right with the holes in your trucks. It's also a thing that center punching helps with. Cool, and there you go. A set of mounting holes for skateboard trucks. This is our tail end. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the nose and then we'll move on to the next thing. And this thing that I'm doing where I'm putting the bit down and then dragging it, as you can feel when the tip of the bit gets into the center punched hole, and that means you're exactly where you need to be. Sweet! So now that we've got our center line and our bolt holes in place, I'm going to lay out the outside shape of the board. And since I'm using a handsaw to cut these, I'm gonna to try to come up with a shape that is mostly straight lines that I think is interesting, that I think will be fun to ride. I'm thinking that I'll probably bring the nose in a little bit, so a slight angle there, and then maybe do like a hog's head. Nice blunt nose with a little bit of a roundedness to it, and a slight taper. And then the tail, I think I'll do a diamond tail. So a tail that comes to a point, and I might, bring in the edges of that too a little bit as well. Let me do the nose first and then I'll probably lay out the angle of the diamond tail, see if I like it, and then adjust in from the rails. So I want the nose to have a blunt front end and I'm not quite sure how fat I want that to be. So I'm just gonna use my ruler to kind of get a sense of dimensions here before I start making marks. I got four inch wide flat in the front. That looks pretty good. Oh, what does a five inch one look like? Five inch one is pretty fat. That's a big fat hammerhead board. So let's do four. So I'm gonna take my center mark here and I'm gonna mark two inches out on either side. That's gonna be the width of our flat blunt nose. Um, and I do want there, so there's gonna be like three angles. There's gonna be the flat, and then there's gonna be an, an aggressive angle, and then there's gonna be a shallow angle to kind of transition out from the straight on the rails of the deck. So what do I want this angle to look like? like that's too extreme. <laughs> that's really silly looking and kind of gives me no useful nose. That looks, you know what? I might actually kind of like that. I was thinking we'd end up with something close to 45 and doing like a coffin board type thing, but I kind of like that shallow, shallower angle. So if I were to make a mark somewhere like here, what is that? Almost exactly an inch, so cool. I'll mark an inch here, and I'll mark an inch here, and I'll connect those tick marks, and that'll give me our first set of cuts that we're gonna make or at least the first set of cuts that we've laid out. And again, I'm using a Sharpie here. It shows up really well on screen, but I'm gonna be cutting all of this and then sanding away from it. So whatever lines I draw here for cutting my board shape, they're gonna get cut and then abraded away and removed when I get to rounding the rails. Now, let's see about this subtle taper. This is a little tough to think about since I'm using a handsaw, I can't be too, I don't know, cute about this or acute, you can't have too acute of an angle. I did not intend for that pun, but you've got it now anyway. I'm looking at my bolt holes and thinking like, I want the full concave up until over the trucks. I like having my feet over the trucks, so I probably want the full width of the board till somewhere at least there. If we put them right, basically right smack in the middle of the trucks, a little bit behind the center of the trucks, that's three and a half inches. So let's 
give that a look. That's a cut, that's a chunk of wood that I know I'll be able to cut with a handsaw and it won't be too squirrely or be too difficult to get the cut started. And it's pretty subtle. I like subtlety. I'll call it a half inch there. I'm gonna mark that, draw my line. It helps to have a flexible ruler for this so that you can push it down and make sure you're following the curves of the board. There you go. And when I say a half inch, a half inch here. Cool. That's, <laughs> that's a pretty fat nose. <laughs> that's okay. That, that maybe we'll make it fat up top and make it kind of thin out towards the back. That's gonna be silly looking, but I kind of like it. So just to give you an idea of what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut along these lines, cut along these lines, removing all of this. And this will be our nose shape. And we'll go in and it looks pretty aggressive now, but we'll go in with all those abrasives and round out the corners and it'll look really nice and smooth. Cool, let's do the same thing for the tail. So for the tail, we're gonna be thinking about a similar set of concerns, but since I actually intend to be able to put my foot back here, which I don't really plan to do on the nose, that's one more thing to think about. We wanna be thinking about the shape up until the bolt holes and we wanna be thinking about kind of how our foot is gonna get placed here. I said I wanted to do a diamond tail and I do, which means we're gonna be drawing a line from the center mark out to the edge. Let's take a look at some angles there and see what looks good. That looks good. That is way too aggressive. That might actually be nice. I'm deciding between a shallower angle, which will give us more of like a shovel tail. It'll still be a diamond tail, but it'll kind of behave more like a shovel tail. Or a steeper angle. And you know what? Since we have that big fat hammerhead type nose, let's go with the steeper angle and really push for the contrast in the back and make the back kind of like tapered and narrow. Oh yeah, that's gonna be funky. <laughs> this is gonna be a weird board. I'm looking forward to this. It's gonna be fun. Super weird. And this is not gonna stay this sharp. And when we get in there with the rasps and everything, this is gonna get rounded out and make it a lot nicer. Now, I think I do wanna taper this, but the question is from where? and how drastically. I would like, I think I would like to have a lot of tail steel still available, so I don't wanna go in too much. I also have to be thinking about what I can actually cut with the saw. The transition to the kicktail is right about here. That is right about the center of that bend. So if we wanted the full width of the concave, the concave ends right about there. So maybe that's where we start our taper. That makes sense to me. How far is that? All right. Five inches actually puts us a little behind that, a little bit closer to the tail, but I like that. So we'll do that. We'll mark five inches on this side as well. And how aggressively do we wanna come in on this? I don't think I wanna be that aggressive at all. I'm thinking like a half inch at most. Yeah, we'll do a half inch. So this is getting more into the kind of like shaped board territory. If you wanted to have a round, more standard kicktail, all you would have to do is keep adding lines. You could put one in there, for example, to kind of bisect this and make this flat, and you could divide this and divide this. And the more lines you have, the more angles you have, when you go in to smooth things out and shape your rails and sand and everything, you can take those straight lines and basically make them into a curve. Now, I actually kind of do want the geometric shape, so I'm gonna save it for now. This is probably <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna be a really weird kicktail. But just know that even if you don't have that thin bladed saw to like steer through curved cuts, you can make curves by cutting multiple straight lines. It's just a little bit more work. And that's just gonna be, let's see, one, two, three, four, and then the same amount on the nose. So eight cuts with a handsaw to give us a funky board shape. Now that we've got our cuts laid out, let's grab the saw and start cutting. I'm gonna start with the cuts for the nose and I'm gonna start with the more subtle cuts. And since this is a really thin wedge, it would be hard to get a cut started here. So I'm gonna start from the outside and cut this way. And then this, uh, this cut that's a little bit less thin, a little bit broader, I'll be able to do more easily after all the pieces are removed. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, you can see that that piece kind of split away at the end there, so I ended up with a really rough cut here. That's fine. That's what the, the planes and the microplanes and the files and the sandpaper will be able to go in with those and round that right off, and we'll be able to make sure that both sides look the same. 
So don't worry about little blemishes like that at this point in the process. They're okay. We're gonna be able to go in later and smooth them out and make sure that they look good. following my own advice and starting the cut from the thin side, and this is what happens. Now, I, I feel confident enough with the saw that I know that I'm gonna be able to eventually get that cut to stick and I'll be able to go all the way through. If you're having difficulty and you are not able to line up your cut from this side in a way that's easy, you can always transfer your marks to the other side and remark your line and cut it in a way that makes a little bit more sense. That is a goofy looking nose. Okay, let's see the tail. Whoops, took some of my mold with it. So we've got a rough cut board blank and guys, this is a weird one. <laughs> I wound up with a really funky shape, but I, I don't know, we'll play with it. We'll see if we like it or not. That's one of the advantages of this whole process being so expensive is that you can play around a little bit. And if you decide, you know what? I don't really like a bullhead diamond tail board. That's fine, I'm not out that much money. And you've got, uh, you've got your mold, so you can experiment with different shapes of the actual board once you've pressed it. And the mold was cheap enough to make that you can go in and modify it or make a different set of molds if you don't like the way the curves or anything worked out. It's it's fun. It's so inexpensive that even though I made a board that I'm like, man, that thing looks, you know, what was he thinking? It's really not a big deal because, because it didn't cost me much. I didn't sacrifice much to make this happen. It's really fun to be able to experiment like that. And who knows, maybe this shape will actually be awesome and then I'll be like, hey, it turns out I just like really weird shaped boards. Here's the next and last step of building your skateboard deck. Before you get to like adding graphics and sealing it, the actual woodworking, the actual making of the deck part of your project. And it's probably time to pull up a chair because now we're gonna go in with all of those hand tools and shape our rails. This is probably the point in the process that takes the most work and the most elbow grease. We're gonna be going in and making sure that all of these little cuts are nice and rounded. We're gonna be kind of making these angles a little bit less aggressive. I'm gonna be doing that with the block plane, the micro plane, and the rasp. And then once the profile of your board, once the shape of the board when you're looking at it like this, is the shape that you like, and the shape, in my case, and the shape that I like, I'm gonna go in with the sandpaper and make sure that the edges of the board, the rails of the board, are nice and rounded so that if you're doing grabs or anything like that, if you hit yourself in the shin with it, it doesn't hurt quite so much. It also just looks nice. This takes some serious elbow grease and time, so get comfortable, get your tools at hand, and just go at it until you like the shape and you like the way it looks.
couple of hours and a small mountain of shavings and sawdust later, you'll have a really nice shaped smooth board where all of the all of the hard angles have been broken and are nice and round now, nice and smooth. Your rails are nice and curved and easy to run your hand along and that feels nice. If you want to put some real extra effort in, you can just sand the whole base and like, I don't know man, you're probably going to beat up the bottom of the skateboard anyway, but feels good. Smooth as a baby's bottom. And with that, you're effectively done with this project. What has to happen between here and actually being able to ride the skateboard is, at the very least, you have to put some kind of ceiling layer on it. So a polyurethane or a polyacrylic or something of that nature to just make sure the wood is uh, protected against the elements, against wetness, basically. It'll also help protect it if you're doing grinds or anything like that. It'll wear down a little bit less quickly. If you want to put graphics on, you can do them under or over the poly. And once you've done that, just treat it like any other deck. You grip it, put your trucks and wheels on it, and take it for a ride. This came out nice. This project went well, too. I really enjoyed myself. I really like board building. I really like making skateboards and mountain boards and snowboards and longboards and all that stuff. I really hope that I've been able to share some of that excitement with you and some of those techniques with you and hopefully lower the barrier to entry. I would love more than anything else as a result of this video to hear that somebody out there went out and started making their boards. And if you do that, if this video series enabled you to go out and pick up some materials inexpensively, grab some cheap tools, start making boards, I want to hear about it. Leave me a comment, shoot me a message, show me a picture of the boards that you make. I hope this was inspirational. I hope it was educational. I hope I managed to show how easy it is to get started in board building. And I hope that you go and make boards and then ride the boards that you make. Thanks again for sticking along with me for the ride. The whole series will be up as a playlist. Come back, check it as a reference if you need to. If you have any questions about any part of the process, leave me a message, drop something in the comments below. And until the next project, I will see you soon. To say, want to say, want to say. How are you overheating? It's 40 degrees in this building right now. It's so freaking cold. All right, I'm gonna give you a break.